Welcome back. It's been a while. Today I wanted to share with you the story of the Skid Row Stabber. Now before we start this video, I did use the Wikipedia article for this narration. However, it has a certain style to it, that's the point behind these videos. So if you've heard of this story before, well, sorry for reminding you of the horror again of the serial killer. If you haven't heard of this story before, well then, you're in for a treat for your own morbid satisfaction. Now, as the wiki starts, it described the Skid Row Stabber as an unidentified American serial killer responsible for the murders of 11 people in the notorious Los Angeles neighborhood known as Skid Row, which is notorious for housing a huge number of homeless people who are regularly subjected to victimization. Well, I'm sorry to hear that those homeless people got screwed over by this guy, but regardless of that, we're still gonna share this story right now. Alright, so here we are. It starts out with the following text. The murders began on the morning of October 23rd, 1978. As victims, the killer chose the homeless, whose corpses were dumped in the alleyways of the various streets, located close to each other. The first victim was 50-year-old Jesse Martinez. On October 29th, the stabber killed his second victim, 32-year-old Jose Cortez followed a day later by 46-year-old Bruce Emmett Drake. On November 4th, 65-year-old J.P. Henderson was killed, and on November 9th, 39-year-old David Martin Jones was attacked and brutally killed near the Los Angeles City Hall in the downtown. Only two days later, 57-year-old Francisco Perry Rodriguez became the next victim. The day after, the stabber committed a double murder, killing both 36-year-old Frank Floyd Reed and 49-year-old Augustine Luna. On November 17th, 34-year-old Milford Fletcher, a Native American, was also killed. Three days later, the serial killer committed his next murder against 45-year-old Frank Garcia, whose body was found on November 23rd near the city hall. Despite the fact that this murder occurred in a prestigious area of the city with a large crowd present, the killer managed to escape unnoticed. No witnesses were located but an imprint of a man's hand was found next to the body, which, according to the investigators, could have been left by the killer. The last confirmed victim of the Skid Row stabber was 26-year-old Louis Alvarez, who was stabbed to death on January 21st, 1979. So already we're dealing with a guy that was completely nuts, all right, let's get that out of the way. This guy was totally insane for killing these homeless people. Perhaps he held some sort of grudge, I don't know. Maybe he has been homeless himself and he got violated in some way and now he took it out on other homeless people. It's very tragic indeed. Very sad because the people already had a very tragic life to begin with and along comes Mr. Skid Row Stabber taking their lives violently. What a crazy, crazy guy indeed. Then again, that's how he used to roll on the old channel anyway. So no surprise there. Are you surprised? I'm certainly not, although a little bit perhaps. I'm a little shaky right now, it's, it's a little creepy. But they went on to write about the investigation the following. During the subsequent investigation, witnesses were found to David Jones' murder. Three friends of the deceased claimed that an unknown person had talked with them for several minutes before committing the murder, after which he went up to Jones and stabbed him. According to the witnesses, the criminal was a 30-year-old black man who spoke with a Puerto Rican accent and introduced himself as Luther. Three months... <laughs> Sorry, man. <Hello? laughs> uh, I don't know why that made me laugh. <clears throat> oh, it's the insanity again, talking about crazy cases, right? Anyways, three months later, in January 1979, the inscription, My name is Luther and I killed him to save me from misery, was found in the toilet of the Los Angeles bus terminal building. They found that in a toilet. My name is Luther and I killed them to save me from misery. So let me get this straight. This guy, this guy felt so miserable about these people being homeless that he took their lives. Or is it a different reasoning? I mean, this guy was so passionate, so compassionate about his victims that he did this. Was that his reasoning? Well, it is a unique one. I'll give him that much kind of a strange one but again some people really are that frustrated with things outside of themselves so they just go haywire over everything 
Now, during the investigation, several people were suspected by the authorities. In early 1979, a forensic examination of the fingerprints from the palm print found next to Garcia's body was revealed to belong to 29-year-old Bobby Joe Maxwell, who had been released from prison in his native Tennessee and moved to Los Angeles in 1977. A casual worker, Maxwell spent a lot of his free time in the Skid Row area along with the homeless residents. In December 1978, he demonstrated deviant behavior against sleeping homeless people and was arrested on charges of disturbing the public order. A knife was seized during his arrest. He was convicted and spent several weeks in the county jail before being coincidentally released only three days before when, according to the investigation, the stabber committed his last murder. Perhaps another peculiarity was that while Maxwell was in prison, the Skid Row stabber didn't commit any murders. And based on these facts, he was arrested on suspicion of murder in April of that same year. After his arrest though, his apartment was ransacked, during which his shoes, clothes, diaries and letters were seized. After studying and analyzing the acquired content, the investigator stated that Maxwell was a Satanist. The trial, for various reasons, was delayed for five years, opening in early 1984. The prosecution's key witness was 37-year-old Sidney Storch, a felon with an extensive criminal record, who in 1983 was Maxwell's cellmate for three weeks. At trial, he claimed that Maxwell had repeatedly admitted to killing the homeless and described the murders in detail. In addition to his testimony and the witnesses to David Jones' murder, the investigation established that the knife found on Maxwell had the same width and length as the one used by the killer. A graphological examination was also conducted which concluded that Maxwell had left the note in the bus terminal building, confessing to the murders. On the basis of these unreliable testimonies, with unconvincing or circumstantial evidence, Bobby Joe Maxwell was found guilty of two murders at the end of 1984 and was sentenced to life imprisonment without a chance of parole. Despite the fact that there was no material evidence found in the other murders, the public and media blamed all of the 11 murders on him, resulting in Maxwell being identified as the Skid Row Stabber for many years. Yes, very interesting, a very, very bizarre turn of events. This happens a lot of times with these crazy serial killer cases out there. People are just nuts, man. Then again, this guy bragged, or at least talked about killing a bunch of people. Maybe he was the killer, or maybe he wasn't, right? That's the point here. They didn't actually know for sure whether he was responsible for all these murders. But they just put the blame on him. In a way, if he did kill at least a few people, he still deserved to be in prison. But then the other parts perhaps weren't really his fault after all. Because the further developments, as they wrote, said the following. The debate over Bobby Joe Maxwell's guilt went on for several decades, with he himself pleading not guilty and regularly lodging an appeal over the next 30 years. In 2010, his lawyers were able to prove that the witnesses to Jones' murder couldn't identify him as the killer and had given false testimonies in court under pressure from the investigators. It was also proven that Sidney Storch, a former police officer and an informant for many years, had began abusing his position in 1980 and had given false testimony in a number of trials due to selfish interest. As a result, in at least six cases, his testimony was considered invalid or unreliable. Considering these facts, the court overturned Maxwell's sentence in 2010 and appointed him a new trial. At the end of 2017, Bobby Maxwell suffered from a severe heart attack, which caused him to fall into a coma. In a new trial, the Los Angeles County Prosecutor's Office dropped all charges against him, after which, in August 2018, he was found not guilty, with his conviction and prison sentence being ruled as a miscarriage of justice. He himself, Maxwell himself, died in April 2019, never regaining consciousness and unable to learn of his release. The identity of the real Skid Row Stabber remains unknown.